all right what's going on guys welcome back to the channel i have been doodling with my screen my setup all day uh, it's decent i really do need to to create some more space inside of this room there's too much stuff in this room and you know talk to my girl today i let her know i said listen i have to <laughs> i have to get some stuff out of this room so that my setup can work properly okay um but anyways we going truck on we are going to truck on today of course um i got four more episodes of this to um this series to do and i'm gonna try to get it done right now okay so we're gonna knock out these four episodes so you guys can have these on saturday um i just need to create some more space in this room man but anyways we're in the end game of things i really want to see how they wrap up this series um so without no further ado let's jump in and i will see you guys for a full review of full metal alchemist maybe not right after this maybe i'll just do a review after four and then do my series um uh, give it a rating and make a separate video about that but we'll see we'll see how it go maybe i'll decide to just do it as a review or whatever you know uh, you know sometimes i want to get my thoughts together before i do series reviews but sometimes i just go right into it after the final episode i don't know what i'm going to do but we'll see anyways guys let's jump in and i will see you guys for the review And you know, I'm I'm, I'm a softy. I'm I'm a I'm I'm a softy. You know what I mean? And it might not be the right way to start out this review. And you know, it's very few anime. Like, let me tell you guys, man. At the end of Naruto, episode 500. Even though I read the manga, I knew how things were going to end. You know, but they just, they, they added a lot more to, you know, on the anime side, of course. They did a lot more to get to episode 500. They wanted to end on an even number. And that final episode, it killed me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, the moments, those ending moments. And that's how I want to feel when I finish series. I want to feel like I'm about to cry, like... I want to feel it's either I'm about to cry or, you know what I'm saying, full on crying. <laughs> like, that's how I want to feel at the end of the series because you feel like you're losing something. You feel like, you know what I'm saying, even though you know you might possibly in the future watch the show again, you know what I'm saying, you still want to have that feeling of you feel like you're losing someone. It's like, your baby is leaving home to go to college or some shit, <laughs> you know? So I really, really do appreciate watching stuff to the end. And we've been through a lot here. There's not many series on the channel that we've been through. Um, I don't think we've, you know, a lot of the series, we've caught up with a lot of the series that we're doing, but they're, they're you know, not done. They're not done, you know? Um, so is, it's not a lot of series that are done that we've watched on the channel. We finished Yu Yu Hakusho, we finished, um, you know, now we finished Full Metal Alchemist, we finished, what else have we finished on the channel? I, I don't know. We've caught up to a lot of shows on the channel. It's not much. Ippo, we finished Ippo, and Ippo is not even a complete thing. It's more of like the anime is done, you know. Death Note, yes, Death Note. We finished Death Note. Um, there's still so much to Code Geass that we didn't see or why. Not really interested to see anything more. I think those, I think those two seasons of Code Geass was good enough for me to have it in my top five. Um, the other stuff is just kind of like additive. I think there was some movies or stuff like that, and I didn't want to dive into that stuff. You know what I'm saying? So I was just like, these two seasons, absolute perfection. There was uh, that other stuff was like additive, different storylines, and you know, with the, you know, it's like 
stuff playing out in a different way, so I didn't want to watch it. Okay. So let's talk about Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Absolutely. You guys know how I judge shows already. You should know by now what I use to evaluate series, you know. And of course, when it comes to anime, it's animation. When it's TV shows, it's cinematography, right? So for anime, it's sound design, animation, rewatchability, right? So, um, so yeah. So those are the three criteria that I use um, when it comes on to me reviewing this stuff. It's sound, basically sound, what you see, visuals, and the um, overall rewatchability of the series, right? So, and the reason why I put rewatchability instead of story, because it's, it's kind of tied into rewatchability, like... You know what I'm saying? Is it a story that you would rewatch later? You get what I'm saying? Um, cause it plays into it. Because if it's a if it's not so good of a story, you're probably never gonna want to watch it ever again, even if somebody is reacting to it. You get what I'm saying? So you're probably not gonna want to watch it because you don't think it's that great. You get what I mean? So let's talk about we're gonna talk about the visuals and the sound first of the series and then I'll dive a little bit deeper into this into the story and we'll talk about that okay so stick with me for a while because we're gonna be here for a little bit okay we're gonna be here for a little bit and I did write some pointers down um, last night that I wanted to go over when it comes on to the story so I'm gonna leave that for last okay so let's talk about the sound okay the sound of this anime I think there was a lot of times where what was going on just didn't match the music you get what I'm saying? Like the music just felt like it was out of place um, for some of the scenes. Don't get me wrong. I love some of the OSTs that were in it. I just felt like a lot of it was just not timed well. And that's that's the reason why I wanted to talk about it because you guys might have a different opinion about it. You get what I'm saying? But that's just me. For the enjoyability, there's a lot of times when I think that this show could have done without any OSTs playing in the background. I think a lot of the conversations and stuff that we're having, it just didn't need some of the, you know, at that time that the OST was playing, I would have rather had a quiet scene. And I think, I think in some ways they kind of overuse the OSTs a little bit too much. That's just my, that's just my opinion from my first watch. I just felt like a lot of times they could have just, you know what I'm saying? Just be a silent, moment and they just was playing the OSD in the background and you're just like you know and this is just me looking at it from a critique if it's just out of just enjoyability it wouldn't bother me but the fact that because I made note of that because it's something that throughout the series you probably never heard me say but but now that we had the, the point where we where I'm given a critical looking at it from a critical eye you know what I'm saying um, not critical eye. Is it the critical eye? From a critique point of view. You know what I'm saying? Right? Um, it's just... It it stands out a little bit more now that I'm talking about it. But, that's not to say that they didn't have great OSTs. That's not to say that, you know, um, the openings or the endings were bad or anything like that. Um, there were two openings that I really liked that I really like. I think it was the first one and the third one that I really liked, right? I think they were, they were really decent. And there was one ending in particular that I really liked. You guys know which one it is. Uh, I'm not going to play it here because I don't want this video to not be able to be monetized. So I'm not going to do that. <laughs> okay. So, um, so yeah, the sound, I think that's the only thing that really bothered me about the sound. So definitely off bat, um, there was the OSDs, I loved the OSDs. I just think they weren't timed well for certain scenes. You get what I'm saying? I just think that they just threw it out and, hey, let's just play some music while this is going on, <laughs> you know, and whatever. And to, to um, if you guys want... And I know I talk about Naruto a lot, but Naruto is an, is an example of perfectly timed 
music. If you guys have seen my tributes on this channel when I review tributes, especially from a guy, a channel, you know, Zurich, right? He does an incredible job of fitting music to tributes, of scenes from different TV shows or movies, whatever. He does an incredible job because he, he, he understands timing and take it from someone who has done this stuff before building scores, um, creating scores, creating music on a whole from an audiovisual um, point of view. It is, a, is a, it is a skill. It is not just putting something together and make it and making it stick and you get what i'm saying it is a skill that you have to master take for instance an example like watching um a, a show like um or a movie like you know the marvel um cinematic universe you get what i'm saying there were plenty of times in that show where i'm just like wow you know what i'm saying wow they just they the timing for, for their music or OSTs or, you know, the theme, the Marvel theme that they always play. Dun, 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 dun. It's just perfect. Sometimes it's a little um, alteration to the actual theme sometimes. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if you guys have ever listened to the, to the, like the Avengers soundtrack. It's a beautiful thing to listen to. So it's like, for me, when I, when I look at this show and I'm saying that the timing was a little bit off sometimes for me it's just coming from just my experience and stuff like that it may not sound like that to you because you, you may not have an ear for it you know what i'm saying you might not have the ear to listen to music and know a hey, you know what i'm saying not now not here but here you get what i'm saying so cueing in creating scores and and, and matching it to visuals it is a skill that's the reason why those people get credit in in movie credits or series credit they get credit because it's it's not an easy thing to to, to um you know a lot of people they just throw some shit together and, and hope you know throw it on the wall and hope that it sticks we don't do that over here you know what i'm saying so um okay so sound great you know what i'm saying sound was great it's just that timing was a little bit off for some of those OSTs sometimes. I think some of the some of some of the scenes just deserved a lot more quietness than because this was a series that was so the story was so such a serious and meaningful story, it deserved a lot better. Now, let's talk about the visuals. The animation, we weren't watching the show for the animation. The fight scenes, some of them were beautifully done was very fluid. Um, I would have thought that they would have went in on the budget, you know what I'm saying, went in and throw it all out there for the final episodes, but they dropped the ball. I'm not even going to kid. They dropped the ball at the end of the series. A lot of that animation just felt not very fluid. There was a lot of switching, and you guys know how I hate, I hate camera switches when it comes on to, to, to animation, especially if you want something that flew. I think a lot of times... You know, I've just come to expect a certain thing when it comes on to um, animation at the end of series. I think end of series animation should be top notch. It should be top notch. Check out the final the final fight between Jiren and Goku in Dragon Ball Super. Right, incredible animation. They saved every they they save the everything for that episode. You know what I'm saying? The the, the final episode is absolutely brilliant. Same thing with, with Naruto, Sasuke, Naruto fight, boom. Final fight should be fire. We should, and that's what I'm trying to say, like, I'm not saying, because I don't know what the budget was. I'm just saying I've seen better animation in the show, so they can do it. You get what I'm saying? I've seen way better animation than that. So the fight between father and, and Edward should have had way better visuals than that. It just didn't. It wasn't up to par. You get what I'm saying? I, I could point out so many different fights that were way better than that last fight. You get what I'm saying? But as I said, this anime was not about the animation. It was about the story, so I'll give them a pass for that. But I still got to call them out on the visuals. Other than that, the visuals were, it was well done. There was a lot of times where I was like, you're using these blotted out animations, um, 
and you know for for movements and stuff like that you just could see that you know what i'm saying they just trying to get by with certain episodes you know what i mean so i don't want to bash them too much about that because i for me it was not about the visuals too much so they definitely in my book if it was just about the visuals or i expect the visuals then i wouldn't give them a high score for visuals because it, it wasn't all that you get what i'm saying so this is an anime about a story you get what i'm saying it, it was about the story so there was no um i can't i don't want to dwell too much on that but let's talk about the story because i really want to get to the story okay so the story which correlates with rewatchability okay the story of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood started out with these two um, brothers who basically lost their moms. They lost their mom and, you know, they, they, they were so hurt. And because they had this skill of learning about um, alchemy, they decided to try to bring their mom back. Hey, we just need some salt, some sugar some you know some some mushrooms you know what i'm saying some some vinegars some um some salt and pepper <laughs> you know what i'm saying some iron you know um it's pretty much a human being and it turns out that oh no you know the, the alchemy equivalent exchange you know, he lost an arm and a leg trying to bring out Fawn back because they was both going to lose themselves. Um, and I'm kind of glad that they kept everything a mystery until basically up until the end, you know. And it's just we just enter in this world of don't know what the hell is going on to like everything just, you know, it, it, it's, it was it wasn't a story about alphonse and edward anymore this was not a story about them at the core of everything one through 64 episodes right the story was not about them this story as i mentioned in my last my last um reactions in the review this is a story about acceptance and a lot of people is going to say no it's not probably not you're wrong bro it's not a story about acceptance Num says about human being condition. It's about the human being condition, <laughs> right? So, in my watching these sixty-four episodes of this series, I have come to realize that this story is a story about acceptance. And the reason why I say acceptance is because we have such a hard time as human beings accepting things that happen because they're supposed to happen and we find it so hard to move on and we will do everything in our power to reverse what is supposed to happen and this story basically deals with us not accepting death you get what i'm saying so if you look at everybody in the show that was conflicted or had a conflict or whatever you get what i'm saying you're going to find that it all boils down to that acceptance, even father. it's He just couldn't accept the fact. Remember, that's the reason why they flash back at the end. I think it's at episode 63 where they flash back and he was talking and he's like, you know, I would just be happy with just being out of this flax. Now, that was when he was supposed to be accept, just accept the fact that I'm out of the flask. I'm good. No. But now you want to absorb God, so no acceptance, right? So we're moving on. We're, we're trying to be better and become better and be God and look at humans like they're nothing and all of this other stuff. And that's where it comes in. Where And another thing that happens in this anime is when they talk about, you know, us, the obsession with perfection. That's another thing that I wrote down. Uh, in my notes is the obsession with perfection now to give you guys an a, an example of why we shouldn't strive to be perfect because we'll never be perfect we will never be per 
perfect, okay? The only perfection that we will ever achieve in life is imperfection. It's the literally the only thing that you will up, achieve perfectly in life is imperfection. So it's, it's no human being is perfect, not even babies. You get what I'm saying? Not even babies. We are not perfect. We weren't made to be perfect. We all have to struggle. Separ you separating all your emotions from yourself makes you imperfect. So the thing is, is that while we have these emotions, these quote unquote seven deadly sins that we have in ourselves and we got to deal with every day, that's what we're supposed to do. Deal with it every day. Acceptance, right? So we have to accept the fact that we're not perfect and we will never be perfect and we will stop trying to strive. And I understand that with Ed and Alphonse, they did not understand. They just thought, oh, if we just get the ingredients of a human being, you know what I'm saying? Then we, we, we good. You get what I'm saying? Not knowing the risk, you know, not understanding what it actually takes to create a human being. You get what I'm saying? So it's like, um, at the end there, when it, when it, when it comes on to, you know, the stuff that we went through, cause I don't want to go through every little bit of the anime. Um, you saw the events that transpired. You saw what they were trying to stop. You saw how the homunculus looked down on humans when, you know what I'm saying? the way how they were created was through the energy of humans. You get what I'm saying? So it, it, it was just kind of weird how they just, they just look down on humans so much when they, they're so oblivious to the fact that then why do you use them as energy to power yourself to be immortal? You get what I'm saying? So it was, it, it, that's why I said Owenheim is my favorite character in the show because he embodied, even though he was immortal, he embodied what a human is. It's it's just so crazy because he was a human turned into a monculus. He basically turned into a, a homunculus, but he wasn't a, a monculus. He was immortal because of he was a living philosopher's stone, and he just embodied what a human is. He never forgot that side of him you know it's kind of like the same thing with king bradley on the other side just not accepting the fact that he just gained power and he, he he threw everything away for this power you get what i'm saying for this power so um so there's there's a lot to this story that i really liked but at the end of the day as i said before i believe that overall it's a story of acceptance and you know other people are going to draw different conclusions you're going to learn different lessons i learned a lot from watching the show a lot a lot a lot from watching this show you know what i'm saying um you know it's just never you, you know never play god you know what i'm saying never play god never think that you are god because you will never be in control of everything you get what i'm saying um you see, you're doing all you're doing all of this to make yourself the perfect being again, not accepting the fact that you're imperfect. You think that if you achieve this, you're going to be an imperfect being when you can't. The thing about it is this. You can't see what everybody is doing. That's number one. You cannot see what what everybody is doing. You never saw that Owenheim was doing all this plotting behind you and, and you know what I'm saying? So as soon as you attain this power, he's just going to snatch it from you. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, it's kind of like for every positive, there's a negative. You get what I'm saying? Both of them work in tandem to create something awesome. You get what I'm saying? So in my opinion, when it, com when it comes on to um this story is just incredible it's vast everybody's going to draw a different conclusion from it i think you know some people can look at this and be like hey this is a religious story 
and I can see little aspects of religion in this story where you could draw little conclusions from it, you know what I'm saying, of people, human beings trying to play God, you know, which is absolutely, you're not supposed to be doing. You know, you can think all you want that you're God, but they're really not, you know, regardless of whatever God you believe in. You'll never be that God. You'll never be the creator. You'll never be that. You know what I'm saying? Um, and at, at one point, I really thought that father was going, after he absorbed that power, that's another part of the story that I think they could have done better. I think they could have transitioned into that better. He absorbed God. And I think he he displayed his power for literally less than a minute. The power of the sun. And I'm like, you can, I mean, I mean, if you're God, I guess you could do anything. Hold the power of the sun in the palm of your hand and in a room full of humans, right? <laughs> in a room full of humans, right? And they're not being affected. Like, you know what I'm saying? You could bring it to that to that conclusion you know in, in a certain way to look at it and be like no nah, i i don't think you could be holding the power of the sun in your hand and nobody in the room is being affected by it it's like should i release the power of the sun in the room um as i said if you're a god maybe you would be able to do that to protect everybody in the room while holding the sun in your hand but um no we are millions of miles away from the sun i think <laughs> i don't know exactly how far we are away from the sun and the sun still affects us and he is in a room <laughs> you know what i'm saying but i don't want to get too scientific about it you know um but it was pretty cool to see it's anime <laughs> you know it was pretty cool to see um but otherwise man this was just an incredible story it was just an incredible story. And I think one of the things that we struggle so much about in life, as I said before, is just accepting who we are and accepting what comes with who we are. You know, we struggle so much with that stuff is just that we can't just accept things for what they are in our daily lives. It's just like we just we just always got to fight, you know, and I'm not talking about like you know, little activities that, you know, that might be obstacles in life. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about things that are like detrimental things and emotional things that we go through that we, you get what I'm trying to say? Like things like death, you know, the way how we deal with death, you know, and, you know, I've just come to a place in life. I think it was probably like 10, 15 years ago. I came to a conclusion that, you know, death is inevitable. You're not going to shake it. It's going to happen to you one way or the other. It's going to happen. We don't know how we're going to go out. We don't know what's going to happen. So why live your life worried about it? I don't know. So I've just come to a point where I'm just like, okay, you know, as much as you, I might cry at the end of the day, guess what? It happened. Can't do nothing about it, right? And I know it, you know, it's like a morbid way to look at things, but it's just, I've just come to the acceptance of it. It's just like, it's inevitable. You know what I'm saying? Um, living your life scared of death is not going to help anybody. <laughs> it's not going to help you, that's for sure. So it's just little, little things, emotional things like worrying and, you know, it's like something happens and you're like sitting down. Oh, my God, my life is probably over. And I, I don't do that stuff anymore. I used to do that stuff in my early 20s. But now I'm just like, it is what it is. And literally, it is what it is. Like if something happens, I just sit back and just like, okay, that happened. Let's move on. Meanwhile, my girl is dwelling on it for, for, for two, three more days. And I've already moved on. She comes back to ask me about it. And I'm, and I'm just like, you're still worried about that. I've already moved on on to the next. You get what I'm saying? On to the next or, Hey, 
this is what we're going to do so we don't make that mistake again. You get what I'm saying? So I think one of the one of the things that they've learned over the course of this anime, you know, is they never gave up on getting their bodies back. And at the end, he figured out what he needs to do to get Al's body back. And that was commendable, you know. So never giving up is a part of life. One, listen, they found out that the Philosopher's Stones were made out of human souls. They decided not to use the Philosopher's Stone to get their bodies back. And that's what acceptance is. He accepted the fact that, no, doing this is wrong. Because he didn't know what Philosopher's Stone were made of. Right? But the minute he found out, hey, it's it's a hitch in the road. It's a, it's, it's a barrier to cross. You know, are we never going to get our bodies back? They still never gave up on getting their bodies back, right? They never gave up when they found that out. They said, we still going to figure out a way, right? So accepting that something is happening and not going down the same destructive road is always something that we, we got to do, right? So um, I don't want to go for too much longer. I might do another review, stronger review on the next time, but I think I've said enough. So my rating for full metal alchemist is a strong strong 8.5 out of 10 it is a strong 8.5 out of 10 um as i said it's a really good anime 10 out of 10 story they really did a great job of wrapping everything up i never felt at the end there I never felt like they were leaving anything open to interpretation. They wrapped up everything in a bow for us and they took their time to do it too. They let us know what everybody is doing, what's going on with everybody. Um, you know, um, we realize that the souls for the Philosopher's Stones are still alive and in some way, you know, they can communicate also. So that's that was pretty cool to find out. So there's a lot. So it's definitely a 10 out of 10 story, but it definitely lost points for the video and the audio. Okay. So that's why it's an 8.5 out of 10 for me. Anyways, guys, thank you guys so much. I really, really enjoyed watching this series, man. You guys are awesome. Um, I've yet to be disappointed with anything that I've watched on this channel. I've yet to be disappointed. There's a couple of shows that I forgot to finish up, of course, but... I don't know what I'll be jumping into after this. I might knock out a couple of short ones like Promise Neverland or, or um, I mean, God of High School. They just finished, so now I can binge watch it. And I might just throw those out there on y'all one day. I don't know. But we don't. I don't know what I'm going to be doing next. But all this stuff, anything that comes after this that replaces this thought is going to be on early access first. So I want you guys to know that. Okay, leave a like on the video. Leave a comment. It's your boy Terabyte Reacts. And thank you guys so much. You guys have been incredible. Even though it wasn't a lot of people watching these episodes. But hey, we got to the end. And we're here. I enjoyed it. You enjoyed the reactions. You let me know as much. Appreciate y'all for, for, for being here on this journey. 64 episodes done. Another series down. It's your boy Terabyte Reacts. I will catch you guys later. Peace.